uh, confirm that you can hear me well. Yes. <clears throat> OK, good. Thank you very much. Um, so we had uh, a truly, I would say, a European uh, dialogue in these uh, past uh, parallel uh, sessions. Uh, and now we, of course, uh, would like to hear what was been said in the in these parallel sessions. But before um, we would like you to um, to present you some results from a questionnaire which we have <clears throat> sorry, which we have sent um, to all the projects that we're presenting today. Um, an analysis of our so-called helicopter working group from um, working group five. And uh, I would like to to yeah invite uh, Vinicius uh, Ftimo to um, uh, yeah to join me uh, to join me now to present these uh, uh, yeah results of the assessment questionnaire to facilitate the go-to-market route for EC-funded R&I projects. Uh, so Vinicius, are you here with us? Yes, of course I am. Yes. Can I share my screen, please? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Let's see if it opens. Yeah, let me see. on the presentation screen. Focus. Let me see. OK. Perfect, thank you. We are, I hope you, I hope you watch it well. Yeah. Yes, we can see it well. Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon from my side as well. Uh, I'm uh, uh, representing Working Group 5 here. Of course, we have on the line also the representatives of Working Group 5 who worked on this uh, preparation of the work, uh, Mahbubek and Athanase, who has uh, worked in the backgrounds presenting all this. And of course, if Mahbubek can connect, uh, she can present a few of the slides. Uh, if you give her the the access to the, uh, and I will move these slides. Um, okay, the um, let's see the uh, working group five is as already said this morning uh, looks at the work of uh, ETIPSnet from a helicopter view. In other words, is looking at what everybody is doing within ETIPSnet, trying to help and mobilize experts in support of the research and innovation work in EU to reach the market and to this effect work closely with all uh, the experts within ETIPSnet to utilize project results in support of the research and innovation needs. Uh, for the years ahead. And to this effect, work uh, for the establishment of a multifunctional platform as already indicated today, the ERI platform that is uh, nearing uh, a launching day is going to uh, take uh, the responsibility of bringing the experts together, bringing knowledge together and offering solutions and possibilities to the whole research and innovation community in Europe. And so why are we all doing all this? Because we would like to see homogeneity in the analysis of projects were done and lessons learned and create a common platform. And so we would like to build a universal approach in the taxonomy of technologies that constitute the evolution of functionalities in building the smart networks for of the future, what we are aiming and what we are targeting for 2050. So build the methodology to judge system needs in the energy transition capable of identifying tangible needs for building on progress made and give feedback to the uh, um, 
wider work that we are planning through this uh, this uh, working group five and the various working teams that are working behind it. And um, we uh, would like to uh, approach the issue from a holistic uh, approach, uh, building from the the vision of ETIPSnet and going through the evaluation of projects. Uh, that uh, are linked um, to technologies, technologies are linked to functionalities, and how these will move through a 10-year plan, uh, an implementation plan, uh, through actual projects, developing uh, uh, developments in technologies, how technologies are evolving and maturing, and how these affect the evolution of, of the maturity of the functionalities and bringing us back to a new implementation plan and then a new 10-year plan and this process going through a whole uh, visionary approach how we can achieve what we have envisioned for 2050. Of course, we know that the vision is, is um, amended as we move along because new uh, ideas come about, new uh, technologies emerge that affect uh, the vision as we have uh, thought about it, let's say, 20 years ago, uh, 16, 20 years ago. So let's say that the vision has a, 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 a process through which it evolves also as we move along to what we have anticipated as the emerging technologies and how we can achieve the, um, the objectives of 2050. All this is the work that we are trying to do through Working Group 5 and um, of course uh, a, an important contributor to this is the projects. And the projects, they are the ones that develop and evolve and help technologies to progress. And uh, through that, uh, we would like to see projects uh, really contributing to what we are doing because it's important that we are linked to them, that we learn from them, that we build on the knowledge uh, generated from them. And so what we have put in together through Working Team 4 is a self-assessment self process. And so if uh, uh, Mahbub is on the line, she would like to take on the rest of the presentation, uh, I would be happy to. Mahbube, are you are you on? No. Okay, no problem. Um, the the innovation radar assessment, as we have put it forward, and we have developed a questionnaire uh, to um, help projects report their progress made. We we uh, are doing this through a a build-up questionnaire that was developed by Working Team 4 of our uh, Working Group 5. And uh, through uh, there are about 36 questions put together, trying to go beyond what we call the innovation radar and beyond the, the, the thinking, why just make it as a, as a process, but we want to learn a lot from that. And so the questions are well selected, aiming to bring forward the thinking of projects along their um, uh, way forward and how they can move uh, to the market and how can they build their innovation towards being really uh, implemented, re being replicated, being scalable and interoperable in the uh, in the use of the integrated grid. And so we are very close as ETIPSnet and Working Group 5 to ETIPSnet and to Bridge because through the projects we learn a lot and we build this process forward. So uh, the key features of the self-assessment uh, uh, questionnaire that is, uh, is, is um, circulated to all projects in order for them to report. And this is going to go to all projects very shortly because now we consider it mature. We know that this um, is uh, giving back uh, 
uh, important uh, results to Project Consortia because they are uh, divided into six groups of questions that are targeted to technical description of their work, how this exploitation of their work is put forward, how planning and market competition is looked at through the project, how content and, and ecosystem is addressed through the project consortia, and how this is um, uh, in investors and finance are being approached through it and how this is wholly managed in order to develop and and, and produce results and uh, uh, and 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 uh, evolve into real results that can be exploited and can have their way to the market and develop a valuable contribution to the um, economy. So we uh, have uh, gone through this process. We have asked all the projects to report their findings through their work, and we have got results out of that. And uh, these results, we would like to just give a glimpse of these results. And mind you, we are not going to just uh, discuss everything here. We are going to go back to every project uh, uh, through the uh, our consortia, and we would uh, through the work that we are doing within our working team, and go and discuss with every consortium uh, their uh, impression, their reaction to the questionnaire, how they feel about their responses, their uh, valuation through this questionnaire, and you can see here that these are uh, a sector along the uh, are around this um, uh, visualization that we see here from the various projects that we have received the responses. And uh, these uh, valuations are uh, for every consortium to take back home, discuss it, uh, uh, think about it, and come and, and we will contact them in order to go forward with their own opinion on that and try to build um, agreement around it. And of course, at the end of the day, our objective is to make them uh, not generate uh, their, um, uh, let's say, concluding approach as to how can they improve in these sectors where they show uh, some weaknesses because the questionnaire is really targeted to show and bring forward uh, some areas where they have been overlooked. Not that they, the projects are not doing what they uh, were targeting through the project, through the, the their uh, contract and their uh, proposal thinking and ideas, but how this is responding to the specific direction of uh, innovation, that the innovation rate uh, and uh, how this can be made exploitable in the broader world of this and how can this be um, uh, scalable and replicable in the uh, years ahead. So this uh, is the result of four projects that you are seeing now, the Trinity, the EU's CISFLEX, the Fever and the Crossbow. They, they are presented in this um, uh, slide and the uh, next slide presents the uh, projects uh, uh, Hydropower Europe and, Intercon and Interconnect. And these results, as you can see, uh, they follow uh, in some areas more maturity than other projects. In some areas, they give more importance than other projects. But uh, at the end of the day, we would like to discuss with Project Consortia to bring together the ideas and try to learn from each other as to how we can generate valuable benefit to the project, but also to the future of the project and the results that will be achieved through it. And so in this uh, slide, you can see the results of the project REC and the project R2EC and the project Red Dream. And um, we don't want to go into more details into this presentation. Um, we would like uh, everybody to take back this outcome and 
we will individually connect with every project to discuss in detail the findings. There are uh, uh, these projects, but also uh, in future when we connect with all the projects within Bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank very, you much, very much, Vinicelos. Um, I will now be sharing my screen again. And we move on with the uh, key conclusions uh, from the parallel sessions, which uh, you have partly been uh, involved in today. Um, can you please confirm that uh, you could share, uh, you could see my uh, my presentation? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so um, we move on with uh, the key conclusions from the parallel sessions as discussed. I would like to uh, invite uh, uh, my colleague Aris Timias. Uh, to present the, the key conclusions from parallel session one, market-based energy systems. Um, Aris, uh, would you like to share a presentation or? Um, yes. Okay, so then please uh, take the floor. Can you see the slide? Yes. Now we can see it. Uh, so these are the conclusions for uh, parallel session one. Uh, have an interesting uh, discussion and uh, four projects uh, participated. Uh, it was uh, EU CISFLEX, uh, Fever, Crossbow and uh, Trinity. So in this list of uh, bullets, uh, we summarized some uh, key conclusions with uh, Antonio. So the first one is uh, the importance of uh, regional cooperation and uh, of deploying uh, common regulation. Just to mention that uh, Trinity and uh, Crossbow uh, are focusing on uh, mainly on the cooperation uh, between TSOs in a regional level. Uh, from uh, multiple uh, projects, it was identified the importance of uh, uh, markets at local level, uh, nested in a larger footprints, let's say, to have multiple markets. Of course, uh, local markets, markets are more suitable to cope with uh, local problems, so its market is not, uh, cannot cover all the needs and uh, the required services. Uh, it is important to proceed with uh, the network core uh, for uh, flexibility. Uh, a key issue identified uh, by at least uh, two projects is that uh, the new TSO role, as described in uh, uh, the directive, should be included in national laws. Uh, there was a discussion how to consider uh, grid constraints and cope with them and also how to model and in what detail the grid. Uh, it was uh, mentioned also that bilateral trading still has a role in pool based markets. Uh, the role of grid operators and uh, the TSO, DSO interaction is uh, evolving. Uh, it's important to develop uh, new tools for network monitoring and uh, increase the observability of the network, um, especially in regional uh, level, and considering also that uh, uh, there are some countries that belong to the EU market, but uh, the grid is much wider and connected to also uh, other uh, countries. Uh, third party private actor roles for some uh, grid services. Uh, the supermarket concept was uh, presented by EUC Flex, uh, as well as some new business models. And uh, 
Also, at least two projects uh, investigated the use of new technologies such as uh, blockchain. Okay, um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Aris. And also, I see uh, Antonio Elichetto also here uh, with us. Antonio, would you like to add uh, um, one or two conclusions from your side, or is it uh, is that it? Okay, you for unmuting me. No, actually, this was a joint work which we did in real time with Aris. So my conclusions are already here. Okay, then thank you both uh, very much uh, for, for these interesting insights. And uh, now we would like to continue with uh, the session, parallel session two, um, on integrated energy networks with focus on storage. Uh, I would like to ask my colleagues, uh, uh, Nikos Hatsiagurio and Franco Di Persio to uh, take the floor. I think Franco, you will be uh, presenting today. So okay. yes, the floor yes. is yours. Okay, thank you. And uh, please, Nikos, uh, 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 add the any things that you find that maybe is missing. So I'm trying to now to to share the the screen. Uh, let me see. Okay. So. Can I hope you can see the screens. Yes, we can see it. Thank okay. you. Okay, so uh, the main deal here is for this, uh, for the the main, uh, let's say, uh, conclusion for the session two. We had the presentation from uh, several uh, projects. We had the uh, the flexing plan project, uh, the hydropower Europe project, the uh, the, the osmosis project, Stornet, and the Story project. And uh, at the end, uh, the, the main conclusion is that uh, from the regulatory point of view, the barrier uh, that there is no uniform harmonized approach along the different uh, European member states. So a level playing field is required really across uh, Europe. Uh, also, there are uh, issues related to some figures that are not really completely clarified, uh, uh, like, for example, the figure of uh, the, uh, the aggregator. And also, uh, we had, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, some word about the, uh, the issue of the duration of administrative process to get authorization that can be too long for system, uh, for the requirement on the system. Uh, for example, there is the example of battery that need to be stored uh, 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 in, the, in the warehouse for very long before <laughs> really to be installed. Uh, and then also there is a, another aspect, the long-term contracts. Uh, there are some technology because at the end that was also one main important message was passing through that all the technology for storage are really uh, relevant and important and because okay you cannot put uh, all the resources in one uh, in uh, one items uh, there is a very risky approach so but there are being different technology there are different needs for each of them for example for hydropower it really for its nature is really require a long term contract and uh, this need to be uh, let's see reflected in the, the regulatory uh, aspect. Also, the, 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 the several flexibility services are not really compensated, not really uh, harmonized in the approach along, along all different member states. And um, then, of course, there are limits, limits and uh, issues uh, related to the technology itself, like, for example, batteries. There is still to fully understand their capability and their constraint in the integration and the operation of such system. And then also an interesting uh, metaphor that is uh, very often because of the change environment, uh, it seems that the, for those systems it can be missing the steering wheel. Uh, because okay, it's challenging to design control for those system in a very uh, in a very uh, changing environment. So of course the key is to design those uh, system, those control system in uh, flexible enough to deal with those change, but uh, is very challenging. And also uh, another important important aspect uh, I would say is the the quality uh, in this control 
in this controlling uh, uh, system is the quality of the power electronics or so the material and the power quality of uh, uh, of the of the system employed uh, in the network and um, then regarding the environmental benefit and the uh, and the co um, benefit cost analysis of course the benefit cost analysis uh, is uh, always considered uh, in uh, any investment uh, then there are uncertainty related to what we have seen before so there are issue with uh, uh, let's say uh, duration of contract that are not compatible with the long term investment maybe and um, uh, and then there are the, the environmental benefit. The main, uh, let's say, uh, um, the main uh, aspect that has been uh, uh, remarked during the session is that the environmental benefit is, uh, is uh, by the way, in the nature of uh, using those systems because it will allow uh, a great integration of renewable energy. So that is already a big environmental benefit. But of course, the life cycle assessment of those uh, uh, those systems, those technologies, storage technology need to be addressed properly. So that's our uh, uh, the, the main point. Uh, uh, Nikos, I don't know if you have something to add. Well, that was a very nice and uh, very complete coverage of what you discussed, Franco. Just to add a few points that um, we had a very nice session in which five projects were presented. And the good thing that they covered all spectrum of, uh, of various uh, uh, various levels of application coming from behind the meter up to the transmission system. And in fact, several technologies, not only batteries of various uh, technologies, but also uh, hydro, hydro power, very important, and uh, even thermal storage in buildings. So we had such a wide coverage. And uh, all of this had its own, uh, uh, let's say, priorities and problems. But everybody agreed that the regulation is perhaps what we need to develop most and uh, so that it provides a playing uh, equal playing field to all technologies and all uh, um, and uh, you know all applications. Just uh, just to summarize perhaps, as I said, regulation needs to be clearer, more stable business environment is important. The, for distributed uh, resources, distributed storage, the role of aggregators and uh, uh, the other local markets is very important. Ownership has been mentioned. Proper remuneration of services. The markets, for instance, for ancillary services or for frequency is missing. And for uh, European homogenization also is important because there are differences among countries for mobile storage, etc. etc. Et Costs are still high. So that's why incentivization is needed. And there were also technological uh, uh, progress needed for material, for uh, uh, degradation, for several of these uh, technological issues. I think that perhaps these are the key points I mentioned, but Franco gave a much wider and much uh, more complete picture. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Nikos and, and Franco, for these uh, comprehensive uh, key conclusions. Um, uh, we uh, then move on to uh, the next uh, parallel session three. I would like to give the floor to my colleague uh, Rainer Bacher, who will summarize what has been, uh, what were the interesting aspects discussed in the session digitalization as the key enabler. So, Rainer, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Let me just try to switch on my PowerPoint. If I find it here. Just a second. Which one is it? Key conclusions. Yep, yeah, one moment. So, standard question. Do you see that the right title on the screen or not? Yes. 
uh, we can see it. Is it the full screen mode or uh, yes. no editing mode? Okay, because I have two screens in front of me. I don't know which one you see. <laughs> okay, we had a very, um, well, at least from my point of view, stimulating uh, session on digitalization as key enabler. Um, we had, um, we try in this session and probably in the follow-up um, uh, regional workshops to concentrate on certain key as sub aspects of digitalization. And today, well, we try to go into semantic interoperability, into protocols, data gateways, IoT integration. You know, do we need to change something here in the current Atipsnet uh, IP? And what are the views and experiences from the project? We had, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, we had, uh, this was uh, the session. We had the people from ESMIC, Workgroup 4, uh, very helpful, thank you. And we had four projects, uh, you see them here. Um, after a short intro from my side, these four projects uh, were uh, giving very good and on-time pre uh, presentations. Uh, the e-balance was about digitalization for the monitoring, which then uh, creates data, which then leads to control. Uh, data centricity was in the middle. Middleware uh, was mentioned to be key. Um, the challenge is really in the interfaces and in the adapters. The second project, and, and please uh, to the projects, apologize if I really make it super short here. Uh, the second project was about digitalization at the building level. Uh, this was about model predictive control for, to uh, push uh, decarbonization um, was talking about from a local building towards uh, larger aggregations, how to go there. This is a digitalization challenge and uh, the smart meter was used and uh, they used the SCAM, the smart grid application model to validate interoperability and, and they were very interested to avoid rebound effects and the project will tell more about that. Next one, third one was Interconnect project, uh, a very large project uh, to integrate the grid and the buildings to make it very short here. Uh, the goal is to create tools for interoperable framework and semantic interoperability. And we had a very interesting discussion on that, which I will just come to. The interface project, the fourth one, was about digitalization to provide TSOs and DSOs, flexibility trading. They talked about peer-to-peer -peer, uh, so, uh, you know, approaches, blockchain solutions. Uh, key was, of course, to create trust. This is actually coming in every workshop uh, uh, around it. Uh, digitalization, uh, how to create trust in this uh, data world and, and in the communication and so on. So the key is, this was mentioned, to have the right decision makers in the project. So it's not only about technology, it's not only about, you know, bits and bytes, it's really about the right players uh, to activate them, to engage them. This is uh, very important and this project interface, among others, shows that very strongly. Then we had generic discussions and I will conclude on a very interesting uh, picture which we talked about. Um, uh, somebody uh, said that digitalization project, you know, there was the question, what do we really need to do in terms of RNI? And digitalization processes, uh, it was said, uh, are there to close the gap between ideas and reality. And it's not only theory, this is real, you know, the implementation must be done in real world projects. And digitalization is one of the big areas where you need to show what you can do in terms of data. It's not only talking about it. Um, so, um, and then we made an experiment in our session and we talked about a really complex picture done by the Bridge uh, Data Management Working Group. I don't, will not explain it to you. It has many details of the SCAM model in there. And I asked um, all, all people in the panel, uh, to, you know, what are their focus areas? Where are the challenges? Where do they place their project? And I will just give you what they said. Statements were the following. The challenge in digitalization, and when you look at this picture, is the dimensionality. It's it's huge. You know, you go uh, from the business systems at the top down to the connectivity to devices at the lowest level. This is in itself already important. But how do you connect all the worlds in between? Then, data sharing today is super challenging, especially in the DSO world. Standards seem to be missing. But we then said, well, is this an RNI issue? 
how are our standards created? What needs to be done, uh, you know, uh, in our NI projects to contribute to standards crea uh, creation? Uh, data sharing, how do we share it? Uh, what do we need to share? And then it was said that the SIM world works nicely for TSOs today, but what about the DSO world and SIM compatibility? And what about the interface between SIM and the prosumer? Um, still very open. And the last slide, how to make um, people using the solutions, the digital digitalization solutions, uh, was uh, a very interesting discussion point. We seem to have two groups, namely small end users, which only want, want a solution which is easy to use. Well, I exaggerate here, of course. But then we have the big users like the DSO, TSOs, and they care much more about legal issues. You know, they want a correct, robust solution and they need to keep the business running. Very different um, prerequisites, actually. So, uh, and then uh, you you see that database solutions may be used beyond energy. And an important remark was made, which may be interesting for other projects. A lot of data comes from the outside of a project, but could also go towards outside use. Huh? So input and output with outside project worlds are something which we need to look at more. Um, well, not all can be solved in one shot. Um, this picture you know, was discussed. You must pick parts of it and implement it, solve sub problems, be concrete, but try to think of the big picture. And of course, uh, they said that uh, creating interoperability on top of existing solutions is a reality in digitalization and it's super complex, super complex. We need solutions such as federated knowledge bases, um, many unknown things to be still researched. Yeah. And we made, and last statement, we made a polling at the end on this picture and we will show you the result in the session summary later when we send it out on the internet. Thank you. Sorry for thank the you, time. thank you, Rainer, for for this uh, really good summary of your session. I think uh, it's uh, very complete um, and a lot of information there. So um, we would then uh, like to give the floor to Ludwig Karg and Esther Hardy, uh, who have been uh, moderating the consumer and citizen engagement. Uh, session with the focus on engaging groups and individuals. So the floor is yours. Correct. That's what we did. <laughs> uh, we did it together with uh, three projects, uh, with Sergio Olivero, Alessandra Porfido and Alvaro Sanchez and Marcel Schweitzer for the three projects and together with Laurent Schmidt and Johanna Höfken, one representing the ETIPS world, one representing the, the bridge world. Uh, and we jointly moderated it, so we jointly presented. Esther. I do start. I, I, I quote Johanna. Uh, Johanna said at some point, framing matters. All these group dynamics and engaging and involving people starts from, from using the right terms. Uh, and when we want to include people into communities, we shouldn't call this community a cell, for example. This this is not offending uh, any project <laughs> because they had that insight as well. <laughs> is that? Yes. Uh, another remark we has, um, if you talk about participation, um, we don't want to exclude people, but we want to include. And what can you do if you don't have a roof or land to put solar panels on it or windmills? So participation is also about those people who live in communities. And, and engagement uh, of people is often uh, in proximity. Uh, they, they take care of their uh, neighborhoods and if they realize uh, some progress in their neighborhood, or when they can see the effects of their joint activity, that, that helps a lot. Uh, and typically you also get more appreciation from your neighbors than from the people uh, 500 kilometers away. Yes. The what buildings. Do you, you want me the next one to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, we share it. We said we share it. <laughs> yes, so it's the mutual uh, appreciation 
but also if we look at many cities have those seven, 60 and 70 years buildings, and this was came from Spain, but uh, I see it also in the Netherlands, that uh, in the refurbishment or in the uh, retrofit of those buildings, you can uh, it can go hand by hand with the with the application of sustainable energy, and and not only to make it uh, less energy consumption uh, that it uses less energy, but also to use renewable energy. And then comes something very logical. I mean, of course, we have to make a distinction between young demographic and seniors. Uh, and, and for example, the young people typically do not own uh, houses from the 60s and 70s. So it's a different a group of people that we want to approach and we, we have to accept that and that we have to accept that they answer to different motivation and, and, and triggers. Um, when we talked with, with Sergio and, and he presented the Mayano Alpi village in the Alpine space, uh, we saw that uh, it may be a good idea to not only engage people in their very community, in their very municipality, but also create some benchmarks. People are trying to compete. They, they like competition. Yes. And uh... Also, um, we, with those uh, refurbishment of those buildings, uh, what also young people like, and if to make the distinction between young and uh, seniors, uh, they like if it looks cool. So then suddenly, renewable, sustainable energy has also to do with a cool environment, cool buildings. So that that could help too. And uh, to come to the last point is. Um, if you want to attract people, then also in gaming, uh, in the gaming industry, we see also incentives, and it would be interesting to look at that to attract and involve users. Yeah, games games motivate people of all ages, of all cultural backgrounds, so that that is important to understand. And what what we can learn from these gamers uh, that that supply games in the internet for example they manage to keep people in their game for months and years so what what we can learn that that dynamic engagement is an ongoing activity it, it's not that we engage a person and then the person is engaged understand this as an ongoing process yes. okay but it needs to be started the process needs to be started somewhere Yes, and, that, that, and that's the third uh, star on this uh, slide. Uh, often what we see is that, that the government initiates it, but what we also see that the craftsmen in, in, in a society, they are the catalyst. They make sure that people can do, um, can have the new appliances if it comes to new energy and uh, get it installed. So the craftsmen in, in communities are very important too. Okay. We have to hurry up, I think. I mean, there are open questions, and the open question, of course, is how do we deal with the multitude of, of, of people, the differences, the differences in regions, and what, what, what are the different organizational forms that people like most? We know that in new member states, they do not so much like cooperatives, and so we, there's a lot of open questions that we noted down. But on the final question, let's make it quick. Uh, we, we discussed we like the idea of the energy communities as defined in the EU EC directives, but it's not all. It does not fit all needs. We need to define more models, right? And then we discussed a bit on climate neutrality, Esther. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, uh, and I think maybe we can conclude one uh, important uh, remark. Local is important. But we have to look at also the structures uh, on, on larger, uh, larger scale and in between them. But what, what, is, what is for sure, and we couldn't dig in, into depth, but the people that are after climate neutrality are not necessarily the people that understand smart energy systems. But they need to talk to each other. They they can and they can drive each other, motivate each other, and support each other. But this is an area of, I think, research. So that was more or less it. Yes, Thanks thank you.
Thank you, uh, Esther and Ludwig, for this uh, very nice conclusions. Uh, I think that you just gave me the floor, Ludwig, for the key conclusions, uh, for the conclusion conclusions, uh, because uh, exactly that's, uh, I think, uh, something this, uh, this workshop uh, uh, was about, to make people talk to each other and uh, exchange and uh, yeah, share uh, share opinions and views on on very different uh, topics and uh, and themes. Uh, so we call it. So um, I would like to share my screen. Can you see it? Can you please confirm? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so in this regard, I think the role of ETIPSnet as scout. Uh, was once again uh, confirmed during this workshop. So we have been talking a lot about constraints in the system, uh, what sh what should be done, but of course also the measures that uh, that uh, we need to meet uh, to to meet the targets. Uh, targets being, for example, the uh, Fit for 55 uh, agenda by the European Commission that is now really a hot topic. Uh, so as to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 um, by about uh, 50 percent. Um, and we do so in, uh, of course, uh, working on the impl implementation plan, on the roadmap, as we have been presenting today. And this workshop was, of course, one element and is a very, a very important element to feed into this process. So we thank you for, for contributing to that. And I, I would like to announce already that it is a series, a workshop series, so we will have more workshops to come. In total, still six more workshops uh, in the period from 21 to 23. So if you have any interesting project at the national or regional level, if you are involved, if you are a stakeholder and we don't know yet about you, please let us know. <clears throat> we have an ongoing call for projects. Um, which uh, you can find at the EGIPSnet website. Um, and we would encourage you to, to, to take a look at it. Uh, it's in the news uh, section and there you can find the call for projects. Um, please let us know about you, please apply. And then uh, finally, uh, I would like now to thank you um, participants that uh, to everyone that was with us today for joining, for taking your time, for listening, for discussing, for um, yeah, interacting. I think that was very nice. Um, so thanks to all participants, thanks to the project representatives. I mean, all the panelists that have been involved today. I think that was a really great uh, event and uh, you have made it a great event. Uh, thanks to the ETIPSnet representatives, uh, the co-chair Norella Constantinesco, but also I can see among us uh, Okutzi, Jan Okutzigla, who is the ETIPSnet chair. Um, uh, thanks uh, for joining. Also, thank you, uh, the ETIPSnet coordinator, Maria Laura Trifiletti, for being here and giving us a good and very good introduction. Uh, thank, uh, thanks to the moderators, of course, the moderators and co-moderators, which have uh, made this a, a great event and, and structured the parallel sessions and the discussions and really um, yeah, engaging uh, all the panelists uh, in, in these discussions. And last but not least, uh, thanks a lot to our technical team from Clarence, who uh, yeah, made this all technically uh, possible and helped us through the um, yeah, small but uh, not so not so important, uh, let's say, uh, technical difficulties. If any happened, uh, I'm not sure, no, but uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so in the background, they were there for us. So thanks a lot for this. Um, yeah, then it is really my last um, my last words will be to thank you all again for joining. Let's keep in touch for the next uh, regional uh, workshop series. And I can see now our ETIPSnet uh, chair, uh, Jan Okutzigla. Jan Okutzigla, uh, would you like to, to add anything to my words to conclude uh, the workshop today? Thank you, Shania. Not really <laughs> much to add, but uh, I think it was a very interesting session indeed. Um, personally, I followed the session on digitalization and um, it was interesting even for, for myself, so just to say. 
Uh, thanks to all, really, uh, as Shenya said, for participating. It's something that is not repetitive in the sense that, as you saw, the, the teams are proposing ongoing work. They have an agenda of, of, uh, of subjects that were presented in the past, that have been presented today and, and future topics for the next sessions. So please keep uh, keep it on on your agenda and follow us even in our next upcoming regional workshop. Many thanks to all of you. I hope you enjoyed it as I did. Much Oko. So then um, I wish you a very nice day and a nice summer and see you back in the second half of 2021 for the next regional workshops. Thanks okay. everyone bye -bye. and goodbye. Bye. Bye, Bye all. You.